welcome to piano lesson number 24. In this lesson, I am going to be talking about a question that I get like all the time. And I'm starting to get sick of answering it over and over and over again to tons of different people, so I'm just going to make a video about it. <laughs> yeah, I'm rolling up my sleeves because I'm getting ready for business. Yeah, okay. So this one is going to be about keyboards versus piano. But actually, as most people don't realize, it's actually a three-way three, three -way competition. It's real pianos versus synths or keyboards versus digital pianos. Now, I'm going to explain the differences between the digital, the real, and the synths, or the keyboards that we know them as, and explain the different pros and cons towards them, and try to help you figure out what's best for you. Okay. So, the biggest factor in all of this is one thing, money. <laughs> and I'm not even going to lie, 90% of the time it's just a money issue because everyone knows what the best instrument is. It is a real grand piano and not even my piano, it's real and everything and it's a grand piano but it's not the best you could get. You could get one that's like $200,000 and the only reason I don't have that is because I don't have $200,000 kicking around. I could barely afford this thing because I've been paying for it myself. Anyway, <laughs> okay, so the first one I'm going to talk about is synths. What synths do, or keyboards, I'm going to call them keyboards from now on since most people know them that, by that, but I wanted to make a distinguished difference between keyboards and digital pianos because most people think of them as the same thing and they're not actually. Okay, a synth is basically an entry level keyboard. They're usually, you know, like 30 keys and they can get as big. You can even have a synth that is 88 keys wide and it can have fully weighted keys and all this other stuff. And it's still a synth. What makes a synth a synth is basically how it works is uh, it reproduces the tones like. Now, if you watched my. Uh, my piano lesson number 22, you saw the piano tuner talking about waves and all that kind of stuff and how they're like woo 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 and stuff like that, right? And like 440 hertz concert pitch, so it's A. So all a synth is doing is it's taking that same A and instead of simulating and taking the sound from the actual, a real piano doing it, all it's doing is it's um, it's basically reproducing that sound with a kind of like made up kind of fake piano sound and then resonating that at 440 hertz. So it's exactly uh, kind of like simulated. It's not real in any sense. It's, they haven't gone to the actual piano and recorded it. They've just simulated it at 440 hertz and then raised it up and lowered down for different tones and then when you have more keys added onto it, then they just basically take it up and take it down notches on the thing. Although I haven't built them, so I probably am really oversimplifying this. <laughs> but that's what I do know, the difference between what a synth is. And most synths are very compatible with computers and stuff like that. They have lots of sounds and stuff like that. They can be really fun to mess around with. They're good for um, people that don't necessarily want to learn piano as much as they want to learn to just kind of mess around with different sounds and stuff like that. They're also good if you're using them for uh, entering into entering data into like a computer and you're composing songs. That's another very helpful thing for these type of uh, instruments. So now would I recommend them for a beginner? Um, they're, they're good if you well, let's just say that in any case, you a real piano is always going to be better than a digital one because the action and everything in a real piano is all authentic. You, there's something about the resonance through the wood and the strings and the felt hammers that you, they just haven't really figured out how to completely 100% authenticate it and reproduce it digitally yet. Maybe they will in 10 years from now, but at the current time, it's not happening yet. <laughs> Especially with the the cheaper models. The cheap models have uh, no touch sensitivity. Now, if you're a beginning piano student and you buy one of those, guess what's going to happen? 
all you'll be able to do is you'll just be able to play notes and they'll all sound the same volume no matter if you smash it down and bleed your finger and break it or you just touch it the softest you can possibly do it. It'll always sound the same. Now what that's going to do is it's going to train your ear and basically kill all mus musical creativity that you could possibly have. So, I don't know, maybe that's not the best choice if you want to become a serious musician. But if your goal is to just kind of like plunk around and like just make up, oh let's add a violin here, let's play this and do this and do, just doing it more for like discovery entertainment with no seriousness, you don't even want to like pursue it as a goal, you just want to kind of play around with it as a toy without even really thinking about it. Which if you were that, if that was your mentality, you probably wouldn't be watching this video anyway because you wouldn't care enough to actually <laughs> learn anything more about it. So anyway, that's about it. With synths, you don't get the realness of a piano. Now, some of the reasons why, now, some of the reasons you don't get an actual piano are, there's like a couple questions, like, I don't know, do you have enough room in your house for one? Now, if you have lots of money, then you probably do, but if you're like a college student in a dorm room and you're like, just scraping by because you're still, you know, working through classes to get your degree, you probably don't have enough money kicking around to have a big place, unless, you know, your parents are helping you out or whatever, but chances are you don't have enough room, so that could be one of the reasons you might not get a real piano if you're a college student, unless your degree is, uh, your major is piano, but <laughs> anyway, okay, so if you have enough room, that's good, so that's the first thing you want to know is do you have enough room for one? Now the other one is, do you want, do you move a lot? Like, if you're moving constantly all around and you're like a traveling salesperson and you're like, Hey, what's up? Tokyo. Hey, what's up? England. What's up? And you're just moving. Or even if it's you're moving like around the city you love. If you're always constantly moving, then a piano probably isn't the best thing to be carrying around with you. Because you can't exactly just strap it on your back and go hiking up the mountain with it. <laughs> I guess you could. It would be pretty intense leg strengthening, but yeah. Okay, so, do you move a lot? If you do, I would not suggest a real piano. <laughs> now, another one is, uh, in the place that you live, are you kind of like condensed by, are there a lot of people around you, like, say you're in a small place, and but you do have just enough room for maybe an upright piano, but next door do you have someone that would get really annoyed by you playing late at night or any time in the day because they could hear you? Because one of the advantages of a real, like a, a synth or a digital piano is the headphone option where you can just plug it in and then play and no one else can be bothered. So if you're living in an area where people aren't going to hear you, then there's a good, then yeah, that works. <laughs> so I'm just kind of having my day off here and I'm just like, nah, I wasn't even going to shoot this, but decided to anyway. Have to get something done today. <laughs> Okay, anyway, uh, so if there's people around you that are going to get annoyed, maybe a real piano isn't the best option at this point. Okay, now, uh, the other thing is, do you have enough cash to buy one? Uh, grand pianos, like an entry-level grand piano, starts at maybe about $14,000 Canadian. And we're right on par with America's dollar right now. So that would be, you know, just a good 14,000 US dollars right there. That's to get a very, very cheap one. Uh, mine was 22,000, I think, when I bought it. Something like that. I didn't pay it upfront cash. If, you know, they have financing options. So basically, you pay as much as you would be paying for a brand new car or something like that. <laughs> so yeah. Now, you could get an upright, although if you're going to get a really, really, if you only have like $800 or you only have like $1,000 to spend on a piano, you're actually probably better off to get a digital piano. Now, what a digital piano is, this is the other option, they, what they do is they actually get sound recording crew, yeah, sound recording crews, and then they like go in there and they capture the sound of actual digital, like grand pianos and they 
put that in. So they're not actually faking it by just doing it to a certain pitch. And then they have lots of uh, added bonus features like uh, touch ses sensitivity so you get like a n nice touch. And the really high level ones actually have wooden keys, just like a real piano would. So these are made out of wood and they're weighted with lead inside them. So that every key comes down, gets pushed with the same precise force and all this stuff. It's all extremely well balanced and everything. So they do that with their digital pianos too. So it's actually a good uh, second option if you if there's something in there that you're traveling a lot or something like that, but you do have enough money, you should, I would really suggest thinking it into getting a digital piano. Uh, synths are good for, yeah, I don't know, I'm not really a big fan of them. I'm, I'm thinking about getting a digital piano too, but at this moment in time, I don't know if I can, you know, afford to get both. <laughs> anyway, uh, I like the digital pianos because you can change instruments too, so you could experiment with different temperaments, and another really good uh, advantage of, uh, what are they called, uh, digital pianos, is that they don't actually go out of tune. So this thing, I have to get it tuned like maybe every six months, a year, and that costs like a good hundred bucks, hundred dollars, hundred and twenty or something like that. So you got to pay some, a bit of money to keep the maintenance up on it, and if a string snaps or like one of your dampers goes out, like my A flat damper here is kind of like sticking. Uh, huh. Well, maybe it's just not doing it right now, but anyway. <laughs> It's sort of sticking down, and so I'm going to have to get that replaced, but it's covered by the warranty anyway. But later on, it's just real pianos actually take like maintenance, just kind of like a car does. you got to take it in for an oil change every once in a while, or in other words, a tune-up. Tune those strings. <laughs> anyway, but with the digital piano, there you don't have any of that. You don't have to worry about if it's getting too hot or too cold, or what the humidity in the room is, because that won't stretch the wood of, and strings and action of the piano. Digital piano doesn't have any of those things. But the only problem is, digital pianos still, even though they come close, they still don't match exactly like the pedaling. For some reason, the pedaling on a digital piano just isn't quite exactly the same as um, a real piano. And even when you play a really high quality uh, a digital piano, it has some sort of an unauthentic sound to it. It actually almost sounds too perfect. It sounds so amazingly good in every single note that it just sounds over the toply awesome, I guess. And maybe that, I'm not exactly sure why that is, but I've played them and I can tell you that like if I had to choose a real piano versus digital through everyday practicing, I'd say easily a uh, real piano for sure. But if I wanted to, kind of, for gadgets and extra little bells and whistles, the digital piano can help you, especially if you're into digital recording and making music. So the main things you want to do is you have to figure out what kind of thing is best for you. Now, whenever, uh, if you're going to buy something, make sure always, if you have to buy a synth, make sure it at least has 88 keys, okay? Don't buy like 40 keys or 60 keys, because it's going to take you maybe like three months and then you'll outgrow it and then you wasted all that money that you could have put into a one that will last you a little bit longer. So it's all about kind of like buying ahead. What what are your goals as a piano player? What do you want to do with it? Is it serious? Like if you're serious about it, buy a real piano. Like no questions asked. Uh, if you can't afford a real piano and you're serious, buy a digital piano. And if you can't afford that, buy a synth, and as soon as you can, buy a real piano, or a digital piano. The main, uh, basically, synths and stuff like that are more like toys, and the re real pianos are more like for, like, serious playing, and it actually, I don't know, I enjoy playing on a real piano much, much, much more than a digital piano. No matter what those salespeople tell you, like, it really is like an exact real piano. It just is not yet. Not yet. They come close, but it's just not yet. 
they haven't quite mastered it yet. I've looked at some of the videos on YouTube for like showing you different ones and they still haven't got to that like pure real sound. So try to evaluate what your like goals are. Like do you want to be serious? Do you want to have or is it more just for complete fun and you don't want an authentic experience on piano? Do you just want to kind of go Yay, that sounds cool. I don't care what I'm doing. I'm just learning. I mean, I'm not learning. I'm just hitting stuff. sit down and be like, okay, I'm doing my scale, 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 I'm doing a non-real piano, it just seems like a toy and it doesn't seem like it's worth the time to put it in, but when you're actually playing a real piano, it seems like it's worth it. It seems authentic and like solid and tangible and like respectable, but when you're playing like a keyboard, it just seems like dee -dee 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 -dee, you're just fiddling around, kind of. Anyway, but if you have to get uh, like a, dig a keyboard, go for one that has 88 keys, make sure that it's weighted. If it's not weighted, what it will do is, if they're just the thin keys, then what will happen is uh, they have no weight on them. So what, why weight is good is because it evenly distributes your push down when you push down the keys. Now what happens is, with no weight, it's just it sinks down and then all of a sudden it just it stops. And then what happens is, uh, your, uh, your joints and your tendons inside actually take a huge beating because it just push down with no effort and then stop. It's like no resistance and then all this resistance and then no resistance and all this resistance and no resistance and all this resistance and it's just pa pounding and pounding and ripping apart your tendons. And it's really, 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 really bad for you, especially your fingers. Well, it's bad for your fingers. Uh, having weight on the keys evenly distribute distributes it. So it takes a little bit of muscle to get it going and the key will kind of play itself almost. It is a completely different feel. It's like the piano helps you and it works with your body and everything like that. So uh, other keyboards and sense stuff like that, they can uh, simulate that a little bit better if they have a bit of weight on them and weight will help a little bit. The wooden ones in the digital pianos, they actually are quite good and they take all the stress off your fingers too. So that's one of the biggest benefits from getting a digital piano. Insightful and take care. See ya.